All right, what is up, my friends? Welcome to the Jumpstart, 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 the Jumpstart Historic Horizons uh, set review. We're doing top five cards in each color for historic play. Black is our next color. I did white, did blue. For, it was on YouTube. It was on YouTube. You want to watch them? Check them out. And our first card, number five, is Digraph Colossus, a card that saw a ton of play in Standard. They matter for a two-two zombie giant. Enters the battlefield with a plus and plus one counter on it for each zombie card in your graveyard. Whenever you cast a zombie spell, you make it 2 2. And uh, this card is very, very powerful uh, in a zombie deck, obviously. And the big reason why this card's on my list is they've added a couple other zombie cards as well. We already have Crypt Breaker, we already have some cool zombies. Uh, and then uh, there's also um, Undead Augur, which is like sort of like the 5.5 the card that goes along with this. It's a black, black 2 2. Uh, whenever a zombie dies, lose one and draw a card. That card's also really good. And the big thing about this card is the card Collecting Company is legal. And company plus creatures is obviously insane. This is a great, great card to company into on their end step. You end step, company to this, you get to untap with it and make zombies immediately. But the big problem with this card was when you would play it and it would die before you could make a uh, before you could make a zombie. And with company, that doesn't really happen. The card is good anyway. And yes, there is a new uh, a new zombie one drop in uh, the new set. It's so funny that they're previewing a new set as I'm doing a set review for this set. But uh, champion of the perished. It's a, or, or perished. It's a what's a cha zombie champion of the parish. So that'll play well with this card as well. So uh, card super 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 sweet. Like it a lot. I play this card a lot. I play this card a lot. It was a standard, and I, I was a big fan. Number five. Number four is gonna be Kitchen Imp. Yeah. Now this card might just look like draft fodder, but I am I am a big buyer on these madness cards and the madness enablers in this set. Madness is a really really powerful mechanic, and you've only really seen it legal in historic. Um, it's been in standard multiple, or I'm sorry, in modern. It's been in standard multiple times, but there's never really been the right mix of enablers and payoffs at the same time. And there's a lot of really good ones in this Modern Horizons 2 set that probably aren't really good enough for modern, but they are really, really good. And this card is seeing play in Legacy, uh, in the Jund, like, crazy madness, Lion's Eye, Diamond, Vengevine deck. One block for a 2-2 Flying Haste is great. And then, of course... If you ever are playing as the Madness cost, it basically draws a card as well. You say, I have Faithless Looting, I draw two, then I discard this thing, cast it for one black. I've effectively drawn a card, because now it's a card I would discard anyway. So it's very, very powerful. And the uh, the rate here, I think, is just great. Uh, it's cheap, it's one mana, 2-2 two, two Flying Haste is a very reasonable body. Um, I think this card's awesome. I don't think there's going to be some sort, of, some, some, some sort of Madness deck. What is it going to be exactly? I'm not sure, you know, is it, is it, is it black, blue, is it bl probably black, red? I don't really know, but I know, uh, like, good, you know, synergistic pieces when I see them. And this is a very, very reasonable one. Uh, maybe a little bit of a hot take here, but I think this card's super sweet. So we'll see, uh, we'll see how Kitchen kitchen name plays off. Number three on our list is going to be Sling Gang Lieutenant. Just another Mog Monday. Sling Gang enters the format. Um, there's already a bunch of goblins in the format. And I will say that I think... Sling Gang is going to be a card that's going to suffer without Aether Vial Legal uh, because it is a four drop in a, you know, a deck that already has a lot of four drops, but it is a very, very powerful magic card. Makes Muxus even more lethal. Just all you do is hit, hit some goblins in Sling Gang and they're lethal. Being able to gain life is great for your, uh, for your goblin deck. So Sling Gang with Tinnitus here. There are a few more goblins we'll get to in a little bit, uh, but Sling Gang's awesome. Uh, super, super cool card. I wish they would just put Aether Vial in a anthology and then ban muxus so you can play like real goblins but uh cards super super good very very powerful very easy card to underestimate uh, but one of the best cards honestly in modern goblins right now and just one of the best goblin cards in general very very good obviously fairly limited as far as what it can do it's obviously only a goblin card but card super sweet uh happy to have it in the format and uh we'll see how it, plan how it plays out because there are now a lot of playable goblin cards and um we'll see what's going to go where and so on and so forth that's number three. Number two is Bone Shards, a card that sees a little bit of play in uh, in Modern. Another card that's just really, really good. One black, sorcery. Kill any creature or planeswalker, period. No restrictions, no mana cost restrictions, nothing else. Just kill creature, kill planeswalker, end of story. And now, additional cost here is to sack a creature or discard a card. Now, uh, oh my God, I can't remember any card names today. Uh, the War of a Spark one, one black sack creature. Um, I can't remember what it's called. So that, that card saw um, a, a decent amount of play 
in the Arcanist decks uh, for a while. Not Bone Smunders, it's the other one. Um, and Spark Harvest, thank you. Where And that one, the only option to cast it was to sack a creature or pay four extra mana. This one, you can discard a card. Now, discarding a card is good anyway. It sort of makes this card like Lightning Axe, where Lightning Axe is a reasonable card. You know, if you need to put cards in the graveyard, that does that and kills things. And then again, Madness. I'm really, really big on this Madness thing. You know, if you bone shards on turn two, kill their creature, and madness out uh, an imp, that's awesome. The rate on this card is phenomenal. This card's very, very, very good. It is certainly specific in that you can't just put this card in your deck. Your deck has to, like, care about something to want this card in your deck. But I think this card's really, really good. Um, very powerful, very, very efficient at what it does, and very flexible in being able to either sack a creature or discard a card, which makes it very, very wide-reaching. No restrictions. Love this card. I think it's awesome. I think it's going to see a good amount of play. And it's just very, very cheap. Very, very efficient. I love it. But our number one card in black. I don't think this card is going to look like this card in two months. Because, of course, on Arena, we have the ability to just edit cards. You can just nerf them, right? And the problem, of course, you saw our best in show in white was uh, Vesper Lark. And... Davril's Withering plus Vesper Lark equals infinite combo. With a Blood Artist effect, you win the game. Without it or without your opponent's interaction, it actually just draws the game. And that's an oversight for sure. They must have uh, they must have missed this one uh, in, the, in testing, obviously, because you can't have a two-card combo that either wins the game or draws the game. That's just not how things should work. Obviously, Perpetually here doesn't know what this, what this means. Perpetually means that basically take a Sharpie, and whenever card you target with this, you Sharpie it, and it stays that way for the rest of the game. So, if I were to Sharpie, you know, say it's a, a Grizzly Bear in play, I would take the Grizzly Bear, make it into a 1 slash 0, and if it goes to the graveyard, it's still a 1 slash 0. So, if it comes back, if it goes to my hand in some way, it's this card it, uh, in, individually. Now, this is a really cool card, absent of the dumb Vesper Lark combo, which will probably get a change, because this is sort of like a Black Magma Spray, where your opponent has an Arclight Phoenix, they bring it back, and you wither it, now it's perpetually minus two toughness. So they can bring it back all they want. It's always going to be uh, a 2-0 and just die immediately. So that's super cool. Definitely a cool card. Would not be best in show without, without the combo potential. Uh, but with the combo potential, it's by far the best black card in the set. It's not even close. And they're probably going to need to change it. Um, the ability to have a cheap combo that's efficient and very, very good, but two playable cards is already like really, really good. But the ability to backdoor and just like draw the game, it's not going well, is uh, is too much. So they'll probably fix this card. Maybe they make it like minus O minus two, so you can't Vesper Lark it. Uh, maybe they make it only your opponent's creatures. Whatever it's going to be, they're going to fix it. But for now, this is the best black card in the set. And uh, yeah, it's pretty uh, pretty cool card though. I like the design though. I I, I like these um, these sorts of you know digital only mechanics that are like pretty similar to things that happen in Magic. I like the card a lot and. Uh, that's what I got. So that's black, folks. YouTube folks love you. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think of what card, what, what the best, best black card is. Let me know what you think uh, about Perpetually and the digital-only mechanics as well. Love you. Like, comment, subscribe. Red is coming up.